Hey, what's up? Uh, just wanted to let you guys know I haven't forgotten about the guides, so here's the Red Arkwood Simple Character Guide. Alright, first things first. 5A. Fast. Mash in a bunch, get your auto combo, launches. 5B. 5B is like, uh, 5B is like a mid-range poke after your 5A, so you'll do 5B like that. 5B actually hits pretty high in the air as well. It's pretty well in front of her as like a counter poke. Uh, charge 5B. So, you see how far this goes at round start? It's an overhead, beats low shields, so if you think someone's gonna do low shield, you can... You can do this. Got you, there we go. Well, you're faster. Great play. There you go. That's that's your overhead to crush low shields. Uh, it's also good in pressure because this looks like the startup of this. So if you get your opponent blocking a block string, you can do something like like that, and they'll block high. But then you can do something like, and the two B will hit low, and you'll be like, oh shit, they, I got hit low, and you clipped. Um, after that, there is five C. Moves it forward very slightly. That's like block string combo combo potter stuff. Uh, you could also charge this. So it's twice. This has armor. So you know how uh, Akia Charge 5B has Clash Frames on it? This has armor. So this hits twice. It eats a certain number of hits. You would have to break it by doing Heat, Throw, EX's, EX moves. Uh, shield doesn't break it because she can shield back if you shield her. But this is like a good Don't Crowd Shield and uh, footsie tool for moving forward. Because that round start, it goes pretty far forward. So you can like walk forward, fish with that. Or near the corner, your block screen could be like. If they jump and get clipped, then you can three C. You could do three C after. Okay. Crouching normals. Oh, actually not crouching normals. Six six C. That moves a low. I have her set, set to block all hits after the first hit, so that's a low. That's a low. So you could use six C as like a way to keep pressure. If they're trying to jump. So if they try to jump, you can do something like this hits, you moon drive, or EXDP to catch them. You can do something like that. Um Okay, let's see, that was 6C. And then you have your standard 3C. The one's 3C was buffed in the December patch, December 2022. I feel like her 3C got way faster, because it recovers the fastest out of a lot of characters. I think one or two characters might recover faster, but Hers is a little bit taller than it looks like, uh, it's, it's really fast. So if you think people are hovering directly above you, you just hit them one of these. Uh, insert symptoms meme with Mo. Now, do it. Standard, it's low. You can mash on it. Then you got 2B. 2B is like Arcwood 2B, if you remember my Arcwood video. She kind of low profiles herself, so a lot of characters who do 2A like this, you can kind of hit them around the head area. But when Red Arcwood does her 2B, she actually gets a little bit lower to the ground, so it's harder to hit her. So if people are like hovering above you in the air and they're trying to hit you with like a jump normal, this sometimes is better than doing 3C. For whatever reason, because this shrinks her hurt box lower. And then they land, they get hit by 2B, you get your combo. Uh, 2C. Standard sweep, hits pretty far, it's low. However, she also has the second part. You hold, you hold down, you press C, so you get... You get that. So it's like combo fodder near the corner. It's like your corner confirmed to get a little bit more damage. That. However, there is another part to this. You can hold the second part. So you can do that, which has armor and is unblockable. You have to high shield it. Think of it like Tono's Charge 5C, where you have to high shield it to not get, get exploded. So. Oop, I did it too fast. You gotta high shield that. High sh same thing with armor. High shield, high shield to avoid not needing to block it. EXDP or an EX move, heats, arc drive, stuff like that. Jump A. This jump A is actually really good for like air dashing at people at this portion of the screen because it's so fast it hits pretty low below her. Uh. 
or hit several times, or you can just whiff it entirely and get a throw. Uh, jump B. Uh, think your arc would jump B. It's just like that. It hits twice, protects the space in front of her, makes it hard to approach her because it hits because it hits twice automatically. If the first part hits and the second part's after as a fatal, you always get the status of uh, as if the first one fatal, the first hit fatal, no matter what. So the way to demonstrate that is no guard, jumping, counter hit. So counter hit, fatal. But you know if you do jump A, jump A, they can tech there. However, her jump B retains this property. Even though both hits work, it counts as the same, it counts as one move, not two separate moves. So jump A, I hit that twice. Jump B, however, it hits twice, but it counts as one move, so you get the fatal status all the way down to the ground. So you get your... Oops, I, I tapped twice. You, you get your nice combo scene there. Which is really strong because it makes people not want to air dash at you with a button so often because then you get you get clips. Because this hits you, she does like if you're you know, if you have your optimal combos down, she does like four thousand damage out of nowhere. And then she has jump C. So she's one of the characters who has a chargeable jump C. You hold this. And this also hits directly above her too. Which is really nice because it leads into a lot of the situations that uh, you see people run into when they fight Red Arc with itself. You see how high above how high it, uh, above her it hits? If I can get a proper angle. And then pause at the same time. No, I had it. No, I had it again. Oops. There it is. Hey, I did it. Alright, so, if you notice, it hits pretty much up here, but you can have it so she's like somewhere down here. I can probably try to snapshot a better time of doing this. Almost. Almost. Almost had it. There we go. So. As you can see here, this hits pretty high, and uh, power seal is all the way up here. Uh, if Ar if Red Arquid lands on the ground first, she can actually press 5A and guard break her. And as you should know by now, I've said it a million times, grounded normals are air unblockable, meaning if you're in the air and you try to block the grounded normal, you will get guard broken and you get, and the person who does this to you gets a free combo. So a lot of people when they fight Red Arquid, they get into the situation pretty often because they don't respect this button on blocking the air. So if you're a Red Arcade player, learn how to use this to make it so that, oh, they block this, I can do the following. As you saw, she was still in the air, but she couldn't block the 5A because I was on the ground. So, that's super strong. And also, if people are hovering above you and while you're in the air, you just hit him, hit him with one of these. Insert mode again. Okay. And the other air normal she has is Jump 2C. It's good for stray confirms that you get in the air if someone's flying through, you hit him with like a jump A, you'll do jump 2C. The other thing about this move is it, it has armor for some reason. They retained it from current code, so she has that armor and do 2C. Whee. So sometimes if you think people are trying to do like super jump air throw or super jump like button, you could use this in very niche situations. Okay, special moves. 2, 3, 6. She performs 236A, she performs this like small wave in front of her. I believe this is air blockable. Oh, well, I answered that question. Uh, I think it's jump cancelable on the second hit. Which one is it? I guess the A version's not. Yeah, it's the B version. So the A version comes up pretty quickly. Air unblockable. I see, I'm pretty sure I reset the yeah, guard all. Can't block this in the air, that's really nice for her. And then 236B. Starts up a little bit slower, but as you see, the wave travels further, so it's more plus. So you get something like, like that, and you can jump cancel and I'll hit. So you can get really nice confirms. Um, another application you can use that for is when you have someone in the corner. Let me see if I can get this correctly. 
Oh, you have to block everything. My bad. So what'll happen is... If they don't tech, you get that damage. However... You see how plus that is? She's already recovered. And she can pretty much do something like this. Dash up throw if she wants. Air dash jump B to confuse your opponent. Or just do a standing overhead after the opponent blocks this. So 236B in a lot of situations is really strong for her. Because if you think someone's trying to run up on you, you can actually do this and jump cancel. You get a confirm. Uh, 236C. Cats invul goes pretty high above above her to the top of the screen. Stops people from, you know, air dashing at her if you were like, alright, I don't want to deal with anything, there you go. Same thing on wake up, you're just doing a wake up as like an invincible reversal. Then you have her 623, so DP. So DP, so 623A, teleport. If you tap A, she goes a set distance. As you can see, she never goes behind them, but, you know, it there becomes a lot of mind fog when you do certain follow-ups, so 623B actually goes behind the opponent after a set distance. See? So if you're close enough, 623B will always go behind the opponent. Whereas, if you're this far, it won't go behind, it'll stay in front. So you can kind of mix this up with the A version into the B version. So, A version always stays in front, no matter what, A version stays in front. B version will go behind them, depending on how close you are. Eee, see? Whee. Whee. Um, you can actually also charge those too, so... So, I held A when I did this one, and she goes into the air. This does eat your jump. So you don't get a double jump. You don't get to have two jumps in the air, but you, you retain your other options. So you retain the one air, the one air dash, and the one jump in the air. So instead of doing one, two, three, when you teleport, you get one, two, which is still really strong because you can do stuff like as like a pain on mix-ups. I'm not sure how good the recovery on the teleports are because I'm pretty sure people can try to match on like the A one, but if you do this version, the teleport where she goes in the air, if you notice someone does like wake up throw, they try to do wake up throw to you, you can hit them with a, like a falling jump normal because they whiff their throw trying to think, trying to throw you during your teleports. And then 623, well that's 63 B hold. 63 B hold will always go behind them if you're close enough. See? This one actually travels a little bit further than the whole version of six, the normal version of 63B. And then 63C is this, everyone's favorite. Uh, that is air unblockable. That that one's actually a hit. 63C is a hit. So if you notice people jumping over your projectile, which I'll get to in a second, you can use this to cancel and snipe them out of the air. Provides provides knockdown that they cannot tech if you want to. Fast enough, you should be able to get an OTG to get a little bit more damage from meter. Then you have 214, her 214 series, so 214A. It's rings, everybody loves rings. It's good for controlling space. If your opponent has uh, troubles getting around rings, you can use this as your main game plan. If like, they can't fight rings, cool, I'll just zone them with rings until they figure out what to do. So this is 214A. 214B, however, throws two, no matter what. Always throws two. So you can use this to like mix up your timing. 214A goes about halfway, a little more than half. 214B goes almost three fourths. And then this next portion, 214C, goes full screen. On um, block, this is 214C is plus, so you can use it as like a way to keep your turn in the point. Or anywhere really. As you can see there. <clears throat> Then you have the follow-up in the air, so you have 24 in the air you can do, which is really cool. So 24A, when you do 24A, she like falls instantly with the ring that you do. So you could do like, super jump, uh, ring hits. Super jump, ring hits, and you get a combo if you get the timing. If there's like a certain, uh, yeah, there we go. If you have the timing down. Now, 24B, the B ring, and think of it like Akuma Fireball, but if Akuma could stop his air momentum with the Fireball. So it's like, I super jump, do 24B, I stop instantly, and I throw my ring out. So watch. Super jump, jump A, I keep my momentum. Super jump, 24B, 
I stop immediately. You also retain your air options if you're high enough, if I'm not mistaken. So... Hmm, might be hard to get that. Hmm, I thought you could super jump out of that height. Maybe they took that away. Or you just have to be high enough. Yeah, I thought you could super jump out of that. Hmm. I guess you can. But, as you can see, it the immediate stop on the ring makes it so it's hard to approach you sometimes. Because if people try to anti-air you for doing this, and when they try to anti-air you, you hit with this. And so because you have EX ring in the air too, 214C, you have this, you could do something like this. They try to anti-air me, knock down, and I'm in. So you could do something like that if you have meter. Um... Moon skills. So moon skills. 6 BC. 6 BC is her... It's like... Kind of like her DP, because you can jump cancel on whiff. But there's no invul. There's no invul on any moon skills. So you just do this because it's fast and it goes high. It's like combo fodder slash if you activate moon drive, this has class ranks. Uh... 3 BC. That's really fast teleport. But there's no follow-ups out of it. It's just super fast. So if you activate Moon Drive and someone tries to hit you when you're teleporting, you will clash, but you will still keep moving. So what will happen is this, you clash, and you just keep it moving. Um, 4 BC. 4 BC is her fast ring. So you, you know that's 214 series, 4 BC, really fast. It's twice. It will full screen. So you can do something like, if I can time it correctly, you can do something like, you can do 4 BC into 24 C if you're passing. So it's, it's another way to like, it's another way to zone people really quickly. Because you can change timings with this. It's 1 4 B, 4 BC, 1 4 A. And then if any of those hit, say let's say you're here, this hits, you cancel. And of course, if any of these whiff, you use Moon Drive or you do EXDP, you do 623 C. And since it has invulnerability a few frames after you start up, if they try to jump at you, you will snatch them out of the air. So, so it looks something like this. Jumping, guard all. See? Guard all. So what will happen is... Oops, wrong one. What will happen is... I did it too fast. Actually, you can do this. Yep. It should say punish, actually, if you do it right. There we go. You saw how she blocked the ring and then I just grabbed her? That's guaranteed. Once she blocks that ring, that's 100% guaranteed provided you have meter. Or you could just do 24 Moon Drive, 5cc, or like anything while you're close to them. Anything grounded. So you could do... And that's free. Which is super nice. Um... Oh, and then you have 7 BC. What do I mean by 7 BC? You tap 7 and BC at the same time, you get this. It's honestly one of the best moves in the game, period. It retreats, it retreats, it throws a projectile, it puts you into the air, it retains your double jump too, so it's like it's like her uh, 6 BC, where she can jump if it whips. 7 BC puts her into the air, and she gets to retain her two air options left over. So she gets to do 7 BC, jump, air dash, and then still throw a ring if she wants to. So you can do 7 BC, sorry, 7 BC, double jump, throw a ring to protect yourself, which is super strong. That's like a good way to deny someone who knocks you down a wake up who's too slow. You just do this, and you get to confirm if you're good enough, or if you learn to confirm. And then you have her arc drive. 236 B plus C. It goes. It goes full screen, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it goes full screen. It's super fast. It doesn't hit, if I remember, recall correctly, it doesn't hit all three times if, um, if it gets blocked. So I think the only time it, it goes to three hits is if you get this part. So I think what happens is... Oh, did I just not... Oh, I said it's no very huh. So it should be like. Yeah. So you can use it as a way to be like, oh, you wanted to heat from full screen? 
So assuming you you have three bars, you you input a heat. This hits almost everything that people want to throw from full screen immediately, which is really good. Oh, and then she has a she has a grab. I forgot to talk about her grab. So her grab throws her forward, but it's not like Arcwood where she gets to pick a direction like back, down, or forward. She just yeets you in a direction that you pick. So the back grab looks the same. However, in the corner. She gets, a get, she gets a combo off it, but she needs it. Which is honestly really strong because in this game, being able to combo off your grab gives you meter. So down here, so you see my cursor, you see I'm at one bar. However, if I get this grab combo correctly, and even with the simple combo, I've built almost half the bar, which is really important because it gives you the ability to confirm it gives you the ability to confirm a random ring on hits, to confirm if someone's jumping over your ring, to to just get your life back, stop the clock if you need to, to get your turn back if they knock you down on wake up. Um, yeah, like also it punishes them for whipping shield too because it's a thrill. And instead of doing like you know, uh, fatal throws you like close to fifteen hundred. Because it, it would fatal, what you would get would be... If I can show you correctly... Seen any shield. That combo alone did an extra, like, 200 damage almost, because she just whipped shield. So, that makes it super powerful, like, really strong. And if you have meter, it guarantees you a knockdown that they can't tech out of. They have to hold, like, meaty ring on your wake up. Because most of her game plan revolves around doing something of this nature. And you have to you do have to deal with people shielding you, but for the most part, normally people are too scared to shield because you can just do the following. Let me show it correctly. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that. So, as you saw, she tried to low shield because she was like, oh, I'm gonna low shield the ring. And then you just go back into that. Get that knockdown, delay air dash, and you just like loop that situation forever and ever. And if they like, decided to high shield, then she just does this. Assuming, you know, they did the high they did a high shield. You you hit them with two A or two B, or you just throw them again, and they're conditioned to try to take your throw. So Red Arcwood's game plan usually revolves around trying to slowly whittle away the opponent with rings, jump C, making them block jump C in the air, and then bring them down to the ground to unblockable them with like 5A. Um on defense, 7 B C is really strong because we I'm out. Or if you don't want to block and wake up, EXDP. So there's a lot of ways you can play Warwick. You can play her super simply. You can play her as a as a zoner or as a super heavy oriented rushdown character. So if you're thinking about playing Red Arcwood, you made a good choice. Alright everybody, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.